Our community has come together to tell you the history of Los Alamitos. I'm your host, Mert Pirachot. We were taping at a building that was built in 1903, and it was a home, a private home, until 1985 when the News Enterprise bought it and is now the home of the News Enterprise. The early Mexican families had a large impact on this community, and we have a couple here tonight to tell us their story that goes back as far as 1914. <clears throat> Welcome Irene and Jess Torres. I'm so glad you both came. So far. Right? Right. <laughs> you came from right across the street, didn't mm -hmm. you? Right across the right street. Across the I mean, let's start with you, because ladies first. Okay, Jess? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. All right, tell us where you were born, how you happened to come to Los Alamitos in, in your real early years. Well, uh, I was born in Chihuahua, Mexico, and in 1913. Uh-huh. And in February of 1914, we came here to Los Alamitos. And who's we? My mother and I. Uh huh. And uh, we stopped with my uncle, her brother, Frank Prieto. He was here already. And that's why you came here. That's why he, she well, came. What was he doing here? He was working. Yeah, uh, where? I think it was in the sugar factory. Probably. That Probably. I'm not sure. Because I can't. <clears> throat> throat> I can't. Uh, industry. Uh -huh. But I think it was on already. I think the sugar factory was. Oh, already I bet your in brother business. was glad to have you both show up. Who? I bet your mother's brother was glad, glad that you both showed He's up. He's dead. Well, I mean, when you showed up. <laughs> oh, I mean, oh, I, thought, I thought you meant. Uh, no, oh, no. Yes, uh -huh. Happy to see you. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Well, tell us brother, about too. your first home here in Los Alamitos. Well, we lived in, uh, my mother married Juan Soto. Uh-huh. And uh, his family moved his father uh -huh. and left him the place. It was a hotel. It was a hotel here, uh -huh. isn't it? Right on, on Pine and Catalina, oh, right on the corner. Oh, yes, Pine and Catalina, uh -huh. okay. And, and that's where you so lived? that's where we lived. And at that, that time, were you renting out rooms? Yeah, there was rooms upstairs, and uh, mostly single men would rent it. Uh -huh. There was a lot of people coming from Mexico, just like it is now. Just like it is now? Yeah, more <laughs> or less, yes. Well, maybe not as much. They would first come down, and then they would send for their families. Uh -huh. And then we had rooms towards the back, two little rooms. And when the families came, they would live there. And you, I also remember the story you told about the barn in back. Yes, we. What had did a, you do about renting that barn? We rented it out to a circus. A circus. Uh huh. They made a, a. We had a circus there for about three or four days. Oh, that must have been fun for the kids in for, town. For the for whole you. town. Yes, the whole having town. the bar in the back with the uh, circus. We had horses and pigs and cows. Yeah, you said you had and lots chickens, of livestock of and, uh -huh. and things like that. Mm -hmm. Well, where did you go to school? To the Laurel School. Now, which one was? Well, I went to the first one. That was, I think, just one room. And you had all the? It was right on the corner where that sporting goods store is at. That, down right there by there. Bob's Big Boy? Uh-huh, right there. And all the classes were in one room? Well, I think so. You just remember the one room? I was seven years old when I went to school. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, and then they built uh, the other Laurel School toward the front, you know, toward the front, towards the Los Alamitos Boulevard. Been a number of schools in that corner, uh -huh. haven't there? And I went there, I graduated there. You did. And where did you go to church? In Seal Beach. There was no church no in church Los here. Alamitos? Uh -uh. Until when? Well, they started it in 1923, but I think they finished it in 1924. Or was that St. Saint Isidore's? St. Isidore's. Mm -hmm. St. Isidore's saw some problems in the earthquake, oh, didn't yeah, it? Oh, yeah, it fell. Yeah. Well, not completely, but, you know, the walls mm -hmm. came tumbling down. How did you get to Seal Beach to church? In a buggy and horse. You had a horse and buggy uh -huh. of your own? Uh -huh. We used to go clear up to Huntington Beach to visit my mm -hmm. mother's other brother. So we leave in the morning, and then we'd be back before it got dark, because we didn't have no <laughs> lights. No headlights. <laughs> no headlights. <laughs> Jess, let's get over to you. You were telling me about a car you had that used to light the headlights with yeah, a match. A Model T. A Model T. Uh, they used to go to the fights at Vernon. In Vernon? Yes, when you went to the fights? Yes. When you were, what, teenager? Age? Oh, I was about 15 years old. Oh. Tell me where you came from and why you came to Los Alamitos. Well, I come here from Jalisco, that's the state of Jalisco. Uh -huh. My uh, city that I born, I was uh, say 62 miles south of Guadalajara. Uh -huh. And then I come here to join my dad, because my dad was already here. He was here in 1914, when he came here, my dad. Uh -huh. So I come here to join my dad. 
And, and when you, you came here, what was your first job? My first job was uh, working in the sugar company. How long did you work there? It was in the, the factory closed, 1925, I think, when the closed. That was it. a long time. You worked there a long time, didn't you? Yes. What did you do at the sugar beet factory? Whatever they uh, had me to do, I used to go ahead and do it. Jack of all trades? Jack of all trades, if you say that. <laughs> and you brought your mom and? My mom and my sister coming here in 1923. And then your whole family was here They're then? All, the whole family were here then. And you worked also many different jobs, didn't you? Well, I worked for a lot of these farmings and the farming ranches. When did you start in that? Well, I started at, uh, oh, when I was about, I said about 18 years old. Ranching and farming? For the farming, ranching and farming. Was it tied in with a Bixby farm at all? Yes. Well, the Bixby owned all that land. That, he owned uh, everything? That the farmers used to uh, farm. And you did that for a long time? I do that through 1943 that I joined the laborers and I worked with the construction with the laborers. You worked mm -hmm. in construction? Mm-hmm. To up to I retired. It was the construction in this area that you worked on? No, no. No, out of the area? Out of the area. Was that a union? You joined a union? Union, yes, ma'am. Yeah. I joined a local of San Ana for 506. Santa Ana, mm -hmm. 506? Mm -hmm. Or oh, 605. Oh, 605? 605, <laughs> yes. That was oh. the other way. And you also spent a lot of time working for the city of Los Alamitos after you after retired retire from there. From you just keep retiring and working, don't you? I yeah, retired from the local, and then I worked for the city four years. What did you do for the city? Yes, main the streets and patching hot stuff and take care of the streets and all that. Mostly the streets? Mm -hmm. It was nice to have them around the house, wasn't it? Around the neighborhood. Popped in for lunch, didn't he, Irene? <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you first came to Los Alamitos, you, the very first girl that you met, who was that? You want me to tell you? Yes, I want you to tell me the story about <laughs> this that. lady here. <laughs> the first one you met. Yes, How old was she? She was five years old. Did you know Destiny was knocking at no. the door? No. And you no. were knocking at the door, weren't you? Yeah, I'm knocking at the door. <laughs> she, she's the one to come up to the door and ask for the door. So I asked her, where are your mom? What are you wanting for? So then her mama goes, what do you want? I said, well, I'm looking for so-and-so my, for my dad, Miguel Torres. Uh -huh. So I said, well, she, he lives so, 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 go to the railroad track, and you're going to see a little chuck there. That's where they live. I find him there. Little did you know, right, uh -huh. she'd marry Irene. You believe that? Yeah, that's quite a story, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> when you were a teenager, what did you do for fun in this town? Well, I'd drive my bike, go to the beaches, and ride oh. around here on the bike. And All your friends had bikes? Uh, you went to Seal Beach? I went to Seal Beach on my bike. A bunch of kids go with us, you know. Uh-huh. Go to the beach. And then when you got a little older, you drove that Model T to Vernon uh, to the fights. Yeah, that was, that was a different. That was a lot different? Oh, yes. How? The only difference is that uh, we have to, uh, as soon as it gets dark, we have to get off and light a match and start the lights on so we can have lights on it. <laughs> Did you ever get a ride in that car? No? <laughs> no, you ran that horse in a buggy. Oh, yeah, that was safer. Horse in the buggy. <laughs> what did you do as a teenager in town? What did, what did your girlfriends do? Well, uh, I had friends, you know, and mm -hmm. I played with my friends. And, and all the people that lived in the back, they all had kids. So we all got together and played. Uh, my Where'd mother your mom used come? to, in, at the Piggly Wiggly store really? in Anaheim. And he used to drive us. Well, that's it, after I had my model T. Yeah, that was he the used model to drive team? us to the store. They used to get paid, I think it was uh, every two weeks at the sugar factory. Sugar factory. Uh -huh. And uh, he would drive us and my mother would get groceries for the next, you know, two weeks. Well, now is that where most everyone shopped? Was yeah, that the Piggly Wiggly? Yeah, that was there the wasn't closest any big, one? There wasn't any big store around here. Just little, you know, uh -huh. tiny little market. Any, just little markets? Yeah, and that one had everything, you know, clothes and everything, you know. That, like a general store? Yeah. That's right. Bill Poe yeah. had told us about yeah. that general store. Uh-huh. And they had one here, too. We used, to, you know, for everyday stuff like milk and uh, meat and butter and all that stuff. We couldn't keep it because right. all we had was just little ice boxes. 
no refrigerator. Uh -huh. And the ice man would come and did you have yeah, a sign in the window? Yeah, and deliver our ice. <laughs> but told how when we wanted, wanted ice and we, when we didn't. Yeah. yeah. You know, we're taping this mm -hmm. because it really got started. We wanted to have this for the children in to high see. school. And mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have this tape at the museum. And I think these things are things that they're going to just love coming down and uh -huh. hearing. How long have you been married? Since 1929. That's 58 years. Your 60th is coming up. How many children and grandchildren? Four. We have four children. And grandchildren? Eleven. Eleven? And, and four great-great-children. Great oh, you're lucky. Do they live close? Mm, well, yeah, in Garden Grove. Most of them live in Garden Grove. You know, I, what I found out about this community is that so many of the families that came here a long time ago stayed. There's a lot of people that stayed. And when we were talking before the show, you were giving the names of some of the uh, early Mexican families that were here mm -hmm. real early, the time you came. Mm -hmm. And if I read off some of the names, you tell me a little bit about them and if they're in town. Well, if I can. Oh, you know all the gossip. <laughs> Come on, Irene. <laughs> tell me about the Guzmans. Tell me some good stuff about the Guzmans. The Guzmans. Guzmans? Well, all there is left is the lady. She's still alive. Mrs. Guzman. Mrs. Guzman is still alive. Uh -huh. And is she, she, didn't you tell me she was quite old, elderly? Oh, yeah. She, she, she thought she might be the oldest 95, person in town. Maybe older, but uh, keep it. 95. Oh, keep it at 95? She may watch they may, the show. They may not like it. <laughs> <laughs> they may sue me. <laughs> yeah, but I know she's, she's quite old. Now, let me see if I can just say this one right. The Navarros. Navarros. There's uh -huh. a, a, some of them are still here. The, the daughters, you know. Well, I have a lot more names, but you know what we're going to do right now? We're going to take a break because okay. the director's got some neat things she's going to show. Okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, now that we've seen the great then and now pictures, we'll go back to the early families of mm -hmm. Los Alamitas. So will you keep telling me all the good stuff about these families? We, we've got the oldest lady now in, in Los Alamitos down there, uh -huh. right? Okay, let's go to the Mendez family. Well, they were the ones that, that lived over here in the corner okay. where the water well was. They had a water well. Oh, they had the water well. Uh-huh, they were the people okay. that... They lived right next door to where you live now. Uh-huh. Okay, and what about the Mendozas? They live right. right. Forresta and Maine. So now down to the corner of Catella, on that same side of the street, there was all a series of residences along the street, miscellaneous, I can't recall specifically which ones there were, but some years early, in the early history, they built that church, the St. Isidore's Church. 1925, I think. And. Uh, this Mike Reagan that I mentioned earlier is owning the water company in town. Uh -huh. He passed on about that time, and I remember attending his funeral, and it was one of the first ones in the community after his death. Uh, now, going back to the sugar factory and coming south okay. on the east side of the street, there was nothing but a big field in that first block down to uh, uh, Catalina Street. Okay. But on the north east corner of Catalina was a jail. Irene, a little earlier, was yes. didn't have any recollection of that jail. Maybe she didn't remember it, but there was a steel one-cell jail built on that corner with a one-by-twelve wooden building built around the cell. 
and we were a county territory, but the Orange County Sheriff would come out here once in a while and arrest somebody and put them in that jail until they knew what to do with them. Uh, <laughs> I should back up just to brief that. At first block, I missed my house. The first house I and my family, my family lived in in Los Alamitos was located at the corner of Serpentine Drive on the on the south west corner uh -huh. and it was the only house in that area at that time and then one block south of the general manager's home so that takes care of that but going on south now on the east side of Maine uh, crossing the intersection we go down about a or nearly a half a block with vacant land but we come to a Jerpin bakery and this bakery the baker had a warehouse inside of his bake shop uh -huh. And there again, like the shoemaker, the baker lived in the front of the shop with his store and lived in the back in his residence. Mm -hmm. And uh, right adjacent to that was the Harmona Hotel going south. Okay. And there are the itinerant workers that worked in the sugar factory before the clubhouse was built on the boulevard for the sugar factory. Uh -huh. This Harmona Hotel served as the quarters for these single workers that came during the campaign at the sugar factory and they lived there and ate there, boarded there. Next to the Harmona Hotel were a couple of residences uh -huh. and then the uh, Scott and Frampton grocery store on the corner of Floresta. Now, is and that where you worked? No, I worked, no? I worked, at, I worked at, at Dunbar's store, which is the old red building at the corner of uh, Catalina and Maine. What did you do uh, there? Just a uh, clerk, off, uh, I sold groceries. You sold groceries? I learned a few words of Mexican. That's you where did? I learned my first words of Mexican because pretty everybody in town spoke Mexican. Either. Didn't you yeah. uh, also... But Jack Baird, who was also an employee at that store, he finally bought out Dunbar, who owned the store, and then he moved and built a building over on Los Alamitos Boulevard. Watts actually built the building, oh, and then okay. Jack Baird leased it. I see. And I helped him move the store. And then it was while he was there that and I worked in that store and I took these orders around the community. For now, you, you, what you would do, you would go to different homes and take the orders and the women didn't have to shop. They didn't have to. They could order anything they wanted. And, and, and who were some of the people that uh, you took orders from? Mrs. Uh, the original field superintendent for the sugar factory was a man by the name of McComey. And uh -huh. he got a chance to take over a, a, a dairy and back the sugar factory from a man by the name of Denny. Uh -huh. that retired. So when McComey left that position, they hired a man by the name of Yuskevich to become the oh, field superintendent okay. and contact all these farmers relative to the growing That's of sugar That's how beets. Bessie's husband came and to town. That's how the Yuskevichs came to town. Yeah. Okay, and you took orders from her? As from one of many, everyone. I'd go take one her order many. in the morning and we'd go back to the store. And uh. Anything we didn't have, I'd go to Long Beach and <laughs> buy the items we didn't have and come back to the store and fill her order and then deliver it to her that same afternoon at home. But, you know, we've had a lot of... Uh, well-known people come from this community in, in recent years, but let's take it back, Laura, to Tom Mix time. Well, we had on City Garden Acres, uh -huh. there was one uh, family out here by the name of Mix that built a big home and had a chicken ranch, big chicken ranch. Mm -hmm. And it was relatives of Tom Mix who used to come out he used to come here to visit. Come, was this when he was visit. a big star? This is when he was a star, cowboy star. Yes. Uh -huh. Tom Mix. Did the kids all and, crowd uh, around? Or well, did not too much. No, he never he never made an appearance for that reason. He just came to see them and then he'd leave. Uh huh. He wouldn't stay very much. And there were quite a few uh, vaudevillians that lived out here. People that were on the stage. On uh, years ago, they had stage shows with dancers and singers and all of that, you know, uh -huh. and the movie houses in Long Beach. And there were quite a few of the families that lived in City Garden Acres Is at that one time. right? So you had a lot of them? Uh-huh. We had a lot of them here. And, and uh, Bill, you knew some of those guys, didn't you, from Very stories well. I've heard? Yeah, they used to, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You used to, <laughs> they used to take you into West Coast Theater, oh, yeah. right? They Backstage? They threw some good parties. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We got that in. Now, we were talking about the dancing a little earlier. Emmy, tell us about the dance hall in town. Well, that was in the um, only two-story building in Los Alamitos, and it was located on the corner of Los Alamitos Boulevard in Howard. Howard? Yeah. And, uh, in fact, 
that's where I learned to dance. I went to that dance, I don't know how many times myself and one other person I used to, was permitted to run around with, and I was only about 15 or 16 years old. Laura Labradette went there, Marie, Bill's wife, Louise, uh, which is another Labradette, and um, Showstrom. Yeah, Showstrom. And Showstrom. Gillis. Yeah. Gillis. Yeah, well, anyway, there there's four or five of the, of the g girls that I had gone to school with that were dancing and what have you, and I was bashful, and I, I wouldn't get on the floor. The guy that used to go take me there, he was uh, quite a bit older than I was, Vic DeBout. Vic DeBout. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember one time that he used to try to talk me into getting on the floor, you know. And finally, there was two or three of the girls, you might have been one of them, <laughs> that uh, dragged me onto the floor and made me dance, and this is where I learned to dance. <laughs> so. Uh, and that was an upstairs dance hall, was wasn't the, it? The only that were only dance hall and I don't know where. No, I they came long. from Anaheim, they yeah. came from all over. And it was uh, an oak floor, really. A real nice floor. floor. And yes. a stage, there was and a we stage. Had a stage. Nice orchestra uh -huh. and all. Uh -huh. it was, uh, and I don't remember how often that was. I'm thinking every Saturday every, night. Every Saturday yeah, night. Every was, Saturday yeah. night. Were you there? I bet you were there too, Bill, weren't you every Saturday night? Yeah, bet Bill you. He and was. AJ, uh -huh. AJ, my husband. At least every other Saturday. My husband was a dancer from the word go, so he. He enjoyed it. And he it. used to dance a lot with uh, Florence uh, Layton. 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 Right. Yeah. And, and Mayotte. I learned to dance then, and then, uh, like I said, I was about 15 or 16 years old. And uh, since I lost my wife, which is a year and a half ago, I dance two and three times a week now. Do you really? <laughs> I mean, sure great. Do. Where do you go? Long Beach uh, Senior Citizen Center at uh, 4th and Orange. Good for you. Good for you. And mm -hmm. uh, I found me some real there. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the old gang, huh? Like the old Labradette girls. Somewhere near yeah. my age, it's surprising the amount of people yeah. that of my age that are still dancing and That's enjoy dancing. That's great. Now this this two-story building, <clears throat> what what happened to it in an earthquake? Oh, it was fell apart, like uh, most all two-story buildings. They the mortar in it was a brick building. And the mortar in the, in the, that they used to, to make uh, your brick buildings with had very little cement in it, and it would uh, just uh, come apart. And the, the sides of these uh, buildings would just fall into the streets. And uh, the, however, the they were this building was completely rebuilt uh -huh. and uh, As a two -story restored. Too. And uh, however, they never did use that second floor anymore after the earthquake. But they were two or three or four stores uh, in, the, in the lower. Down below, there yeah. was a pawn shop Laura for a while. used to live downstairs in that building. Yeah. You did? Mm hmm We had an apartment in that building. My father had his real okay. estate office. Mm -hmm. And there was a drug yeah. store, yeah. Mm -hmm. a confectionery store. I remember the man that... And the library. We had a library in there mm -hmm. for a while. Mm -hmm. Pool hall. Barber shop. Barber shop. <laughs> yeah. Not a pool hall. Though. All in this building? Yeah, there was. There was a pool hall. It was a good sized building. Yeah, it was a big it building. It occupied the But they years, never you know, used the dime never, store in here? Yeah. They never used the second floor because they couldn't get a permit. Mm -hmm. I think the reason was they needed uh, another way Stairway. in or out. Yes. Yeah. And that was never done. Yeah. And uh, an exit. Then, in fact, of the matter is, I think that's about the last building on Los Alamitos Boulevard that's been taken down, and uh, it is now, uh, uh, there's another, st in fact, the matter is. There's an Italian deli in there yeah, now. Yeah, that deli is uh, where this, uh, that building used to be. Uh-huh. And that's only been now for the last no, couple of years. It's a deli. Okay, we only have a little time left. You didn't get me to the bottom of Main Street. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, I'm gonna get you something else here now. What, uh, I ask uh, the Taurus is this, what do you miss most about those old days? What would you like to see back? Just the old days. The old days. Yeah. Emmy? I miss the uh, horseback riding. Laura should too. She, <laughs> yeah. she, I uh, rode a horse we, once. we had a drought year. <laughs> oh, I heard about that darn horse. We're going to hear about it again, Laura? <laughs> no. Oh, anyway, no. so that, that's one of the things that I miss. We used to be able to go out horseback riding, you know, and you didn't have to worry about cars. And, uh, and buggy horses. We had a good buggy horse that we used to travel in. What about you, Bill? 
I hate the population explosion, yeah. and I hate trying to walk across the street in Los Alamitos <laughs> afoot or drive an automobile anywhere in Southern California, particularly on any of the freeways here or even in the streets of Los Alamitos. So it's liked, terrible. Yeah, you liked it when it was a little, well. I liked it better the way it used to be. I've Los Alamitos used to be ideally located. You could go to Los Angeles or Long Beach or Santa Ana or Anaheim, and without, I used to drive to school in Santa Ana in 16 minutes in a Model T Ford. <laughs> Well, you, you have quite a collection of cars now. now, don't you? You That's have that? how many Studebakers do you have at your house? I think eight. Eight old beautiful. I bought another one since I've seen you that you haven't seen yet. Oh. When I was in Durango here recently, 1951. Studebaker. Starlight Coupe. It's one of those with the airplane nose on it. Oh, I'm gonna go over to see that one. <laughs> uh -huh. I love those old Studebakers he's yeah. got. Well, it's been a pleasure. Believe me, a pleasure having the three of you in this show. We couldn't have picked three better people. I'm so glad you came on. and I know you spent a lot of time thinking about things and preparing for the show. And, and uh, it's gonna, this show's going to do a lot of good. It's going to go a lot of places. It's going to go to Dawson Creek, our sister city. It's going to go to the museum for the high school students. It's going to be on cable TV. And you're each going to get a copy. Great. That's the best part. Only Great. give us two hours the next time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, George, we'll get, we'll get all of Main Street done then. <laughs> right. Okay? Yeah. Well, thanks a lot. <laughs> and uh, until our next series next week, just keep your memory. You want to tune in and you want to see what we're going to do next. Till then, so long. <laughs>